Welcome to Art Speak with Kate, exploring art in the Comox Valley. What is art? It's all around us. Art is how we express ourselves, how we communicate, and how we celebrate together. Art developed here in the Comox Valley hundreds of years ago with the Comox First Nation. People carved bold forms in wood with simple strong lines and bright colours and dyes. People embellished art on their canoes, their homes, their totem poles and celebration masks. People told stories and legends of the world around them, of ravens, of bears, of spirits, and created their own creative art form, an expression of their lives and relationships with the world around them. April Dawn Brass, First Nations artist, was born in the Cree Valley in Le Pas, Manitoba, and moved to the Comox Valley. The art of the Comox Valley is very diverse. There's different, there's um, craftspeople, and there's fine artists, and everything and anything in between, from the young to the elderly, from many different multicultural backgrounds. It's amazing the amount of art that is thriving in this valley. Art is a business opportunity for our youth. Today, there's a renewed interest in First Nations art. This offers a great opportunity for our youth to learn about producing art and products for the tourist industry. Wachie, one tribe, provides business skills and experience training in the art of printmaking. The squeegee forces the black slick ink into the mesh. It's clean, strong sweep. Lift the screen and wow! one perfect print. On the site of Vancouver Island's oldest printers, the Comox Valley Free Press is now Wachie Studio, a high-end printing operation with textile graphic and industrial screen printing presses. Andy McDougall, internationally renowned master screen printer, is excited about the opportunity the new studio brings to the Comox Valley. What we really want to concentrate on here is printing art and we want to work with First Nations artists to get them printing art. In screen printing there's three main areas. One is graphic printing like this, flat printing on paper, plastic, things like that. The second thing is printing on fabric and so we have a six color carousel over there and we can do shirts, we can do bags, we're going to be doing these prints here. But the third area of screen printing, and it's the biggest area, but a lot of people don't know, is they call it functional print. And so functional print is what makes your cell phone work. When you use the touch pad on it, the back side of the glass has been screen printed with conductive materials. So when you touch them, they make contact and they go, you know, little electrical impulses go through and make all that stuff work. Trained screen printers who can operate automatic equipment are key to reviving light manufacturing in Canada. The Wachier Studio offers classes and workshops for elementary school children, youth and adults, plus advanced training opportunities for First Nations youth interested in art, printing and other aspects of graphic trades. It's fun to create. The school kids who come through and print their own shirt are getting a taste of making their own things, a novel concept in the day of retail chain outlets. The students who have their art printed on t-shirts and sold commercially through retail stores receive a royalty. This also encourages students to develop entrepreneurial interests in the business of screen printing. Wachier Studios also produces limited edition art prints for local and international artists. Artist Andy Everson of the Comox First Nation watches on as master printer Andy McDougall inspects the print. Andy Everson's work is well known internationally and his prints are exhibited in many art galleries. Screen printing is an art, a craft, a technology and a business opportunity. The Wachia Studio is looking forward to becoming, on this site, the premier screen printing centre on Vancouver Island and in Canada. In the Comox Valley and Kate Brown. Art is admired, appreciated and collected throughout the world. 
the Commerce Valley Art Gallery recently presented an exhibit, Recreate and Recycle, showing collections of First Nations art. The Comox Valley Art Gallery recently had the opportunity to exhibit a unique collection, Record and Recreate, Contemporary Coast Salish Art from the Salish Weave Collection, a private art collection held in BC. Well, in this exhibition we see a representation of 14 uh, First Nations artists from Coast Salish ancestry. So the exhibition includes uh, traditional carving as well as printmaking and uh, painting. So this is John uh, Marston's salmon headdress. So it's carved in such a beautiful way, there's three parts to it. And um, the stand fits just inside it as though it's a skeletal part and the head in fact just sways gently on it so it's not a, in a fixed relation. So this exhibition originated from the Greater Victoria Art Gallery and it's been about two years in the works to, to prepare to have this exhibition. You may see a strong contrast between the matte and the, the red and black shapes but when you look closer what you may also see is the, an aerial view of, of figures. And then when you look at the title, uh, the title reads Salish Community. So then we start to, start to uh, gain an insight into what it is that the artist is representing in this image. And then if you, if you just simply let go of the title and you just pause in front of the work, um, you'll pick up something else. This is an interesting piece because um, um, Kelly Cannell and Susan Point made this work together. So Susan Point is an established artist and Kelly Cannell is um, her daughter. And so originally they made work for um, the city of Vancouver. There was a call for uh, public artworks for manhole covers. And this is a, um, a reinterpretation of the imagery that they used for that presentation. I think in part, like any collector, they chose things that they liked, but with, uh, with a focus on this region and a focus on First Nations practice. What is art? Art is often inspired by the beauty of nature around us and in turn, we strive to create our own beauty. The Art of Group of the Comox Valley is a group of local artists who meet once a week to exchange ideas and do art. Let's see the art that they create. There's fine art in oils. There's plein air art painted outside. There's abstract art. There's impressionist art. There's realism. There's intuitive art. There's surrealist art. And there's dream art. There's mystical art, there's textile art, there's glass art, and there's wood art. Art changes with the seasons, and as winter draws near, young people from around the valley meet together to sing with the Comox Valley Children's Choir. As the days grow darker and the nights grow colder, children from around the valley gather. They gather to sing to brighten our days and warm our souls. The Comox Valley Children's Choir is busy rehearsing songs for their upcoming performances. Let's listen in. Danielle is mum of Maya and Avery who joined the choir to sing. Their vocal uh, abilities have really benefited, their ability to keep tune. Um, their musical literacy has greatly improved and by that I mean just the ability to see a sheet of music and know that it is a sheet of music and how to read the notes and, and how to associate notes with words. Sophie Simar, the choir master, finds that singing together builds confidence with the children. 
Absolutely. You see kids come who are, you know, love to sing but don't necessarily haven't done so in a group before. And as they practice every week, we do. Um, um, warm-ups and we do games and we do learning and we do music uh, related um, development I would say and then also as a group we learn our music which is like team building really and then by Christmas time they are so confident ready to walk on stage and show their stuff. I really like the singing part of about it. Um, I do notice that sometimes we go really high in our notes and sometimes I can't sing that high, but I really like the songs that Sophie picks out for us. Listen to the children's voices as they sing throughout the season. In the Comox Valley, I'm Kate Brown. Art is how we communicate and tell stories. In the valley, when the first snow fell and the trumpeter swans returned to the fields, that was the inspiration for Must Be Christmas. Look up to see huge trumpeter swans flying overhead. This was the spectacle that motivated Marla Ashley and Kate Brown to create their new children's story, Must Be Christmas, set in the Comox Valley on Vancouver Island. Before too long, her mother said, the humans will light up their towns with millions of lights. She told Stella Rose that soon the streets and the trees would be twinkling brightly and that this time of year was called Christmas. Having at one time taught creative writing at the University of Windsor, Marla Ashley is a longtime educator with an MA in English Literature and Creative Writing. I did a lot of research on swans for our book, Trumpeter's Tribulation, so I, I knew what the trumpeter swans had gone through in, in the Comox Valley in order to survive here, because they weren't always welcome. She ran back into the house and gathered bits and boxes from the kitchen, attic and garage. She ran outside to the tall grasses and rushes. I wanted to keep it simple enough for, for younger children. I didn't want to bring in all of the, the you know, the, the terrible stuff from the past, but I wanted to celebrate their magic and I wanted to celebrate uh, the fact that we, we should be celebrating them coming back. Kate Brown, the illustrator, studied art and design in the UK and developed a career as an interior designer, product designer and clothing designer. Appreciating art and then telling a, a story uh, was a new field for me. Illustration is also different from art because you have to be telling the story. And these illustrations I wanted to be somewhat simple, to be like a child's drawing, not to be like an art piece done by an adult. So they had to have that childishness as well. It must be Christmas, cried Taylor as she looked out the kitchen window. Almost, said her mother, who was busy doing the dinner dishes, but how can you tell? There's a certain natural curiosity that attracts a worldwide audience to a children's story based on actual geography of the Comox Valley. People in Europe are really appreciating uh, the wildlife that we have here. We take it for granted. But people in Germany and Holland and France admire the swans that we have here. Must Be Christmas is available from local bookstores, Laughing Oyster, Blue Heron, the Visitor Centre, the Comox Museum, and worldwide through Amazon.com. So it's a real salute to the migrating swans that inspired this special children's Christmas book. In the Comox Valley, I'm Marjorie Greaves. Art is about friendship and family and celebrating tradition. With long Canadian winter nights indoors, people create their own beauty with craft and art for winter festivities. It's late November, the weather is dreary, but for a few crafty individuals, this is an opportunity. Time to start collecting all the different kinds of greenery, vines, cones, sprigs of holly and shells. Time to dig out the wire, the glitter, the glue guns and the colourful ribbons. 
time to make things, and time to brighten up our homes. Welcome. This is all part of an annual Christmas tradition, passed on from our grandmothers, to mothers, to sons, and to daughters. Pam Font, as a girl, learned how to make shell decorations from her grandmother. Now, she and her grandkids get together to make tree decorations from shells and beads and glitter. It's lots of fun, if a little messy. Christmas is always a time of making things. It's always been in my family that we made things at Christmas. And it's really important for my granddaughter and I. It's kind of how we've bonded since she was just little and that grandma likes to color and cut and paste and glue. And so I'm no sooner in the door and it's, what are we getting on to? So it's, I want her to remember me for that. I want her to remember those fun times that we've had together and so that when she thinks about Christmas, maybe she'll pass it on too and do some fun things. By baking Christmas cookies, making decorations for the home is a way of bringing generations of a family together. Crafting is something to do at all ages and is much healthier than baking sugary cookies. And the nice thing about the wire is then you can scrunch it up and it stays put, Beautiful. even outside in the cold. Lynn Gray has a beautiful garden. Every year she recycles her garden prunings to make Christmas gifts for friends. Lynn gathers the evergreen boughs, the shrubs, the berries, and ties them together with a colorful ribbon. Lynn learned these Christmas crafts from her grandmother and now passes on to her grandchildren, even through Skype. You know, they're long distance. It's hard to do crafts by Skype, but um, you know, I, I, it is, I tried, but I send them in their little packages, they get their passages, their little packages on the Greyhound bus year round, so I try to send little packages and little crafting things for them that they can do instantly themselves. Crafting is therapy. It brings people of all ages together to make things with their hands. It's a way to turn recycled and natural materials into an object of beauty. A personal crafted gift is a unique creation to give to others and to treasure for years, a true Christmas tradition. In the Comox Valley, I'm Kate Brown. So, what is art about? Join us again on Artsbeat and join us with the beat of art around us. In the Comox Valley, I'm Kate Brown. Throughout the year, they live ordinary lives. But come Christmas, all these great people become elves. <laughs> really. These real life elves work at Santa's workshop in Courtney. The elves have taken over the old Bryce Toyota building and they are busy helping Santa prepare. Well, I don't have any small children in my family. and The youngest one is 17 and it's um, a real pleasure to be able to work with the toys and, and see that somebody else's child is happy at Christmas time. Many of the elves have been helping Santa for a lot of years, and while there may be obvious reasons for wanting to be an elf... I like playing with the toys. There are other perks as well. And the people here are, are very good. They're, you know, they're sort of family. I don't have any grandchildren that are young anymore, and uh, I've worked on enough that I've seen some of the mums mostly coming in with children. It must be difficult at this age, you know, to buy things to feed your children and then buy gifts. And it's such a competitive world now. When children go to school, they want to brag and show what they got for Christmas. So this makes mom or dad sometimes too happy. They get gifts for the children. They can pick what they know the child will like. And it's something I can do to give back to the community and make these people happy. Located at 150 Mansfield Drive, Santa's workshop is open Monday to Friday, 10 to 3, for donations. Well, we'd like you to make sure that the gift is not <clears throat> too badly damaged, that we can repair it or it can be washed. And we'd like you to drop down to the shop or to one of the drop boxes that are located around the city. They will accept new and slightly used toys and, of course, 
cash can always help their work. For Shaw TV at Santa's Workshop in Courtney, I'm Mark Hannon.